Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. So today we are going to talk about art style. This is probably the number one question I get. I know a lot of other art friends get this question from people and trying to learn how one develops an art style. That's what we're going to get into today, but just a caveat. This isn't a one-for-one -one tutorial, more using an example to use that as a launching point. This is more of a learning your art style tips and tricks video. If that's of interest to you, then let's get into it. Okay, so if you're new here, I have recently transitioned my Patreon to be all about giving you art advice and also giving you lots of art tips about your actual craft, but also asking about the industry as a whole. So down below, I'll have a playlist of all the other art critiques that I do. I often do draw overs where I show like a before and after of how an artwork can be improved. And if you would like to be part of that and this video series, you can also head over to my Patreon to ask your questions if you're really stuck and lost on something consider becoming a patron it obviously helps my channel and helps my craft out but also you guys are getting direct feedback from me and it's a more personal way for me to chat to you guys and be a little bit more hands-on so in today's video i'm going to go through two patron submissions they both kind of pertain to finding your art style so by showing you these examples and giving you some history on their process maybe you'll find part of that to be uh, relatable to you Therefore, you'll be able to understand and, and have more specifics of how to get on your journey of finding your art style. So let's head into it. All right, so just to clarify, what I'll be going through today is I've got two sections on my Patreon when people submit. They can either submit an artwork and ask questions pertaining to that artwork and get direct help on how to improve that artwork. And then I have a second section where people can just ask art advice, any art questions, what direction to go in, etc. For this video, I'll be focusing on the two submissions for June where I'll be going through and giving them specific feedback, but they all, again, like like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, pertain to art style. This first submission is from Yoda Sarah. Thank you so much, Yoda, for submitting your lovely artwork. You've done so much amazing work and I can't wait to just like go through it and encourage you to keep working because it just sounded from your email that you were really at a point where you're getting kind of fed up with the direction you were going into. So some background on Yoda Sarah. They've been drawing since they were a kid and have been doing art classes since high school and also some classes in college but because they mostly focused on fundamentals they didn't find that they really helped them develop further. They admire a lot of artists who have a very particular niche style and this person has written in their email, I'm trying to develop a niche style because it seems all the artists I currently admire have one. They continue, I made a style chart to help me, but it actually hasn't been helpful because I don't know how to translate my wants into reality. First of all, I just want to say that you've done so much amazing work already. Focusing on your fundamentals, I understand they can be really laborious and you don't really see a point to them, but they're your fundamentals for a reason. They're like the foundation to hold your house up. It's often not the flashy, exciting stuff, but I do think it's really important to hone in on your fundamentals. Actually, let me rewind further. Fundamentals, if you are unaware, are learning your shape, perspective, shading, hues, color, basically all of the elements of what makes up an artwork. All of these things feel arbitrary and confusing initially. So if you are still learning your fundamentals and you just don't like doing them because they don't result in an artwork that you are proud of, just know that it's uh, something that you have to constantly go back to and constantly revisit. That's why I have sketchbooks to study and constantly learn on how to upskill and want to strongly urge everybody out there to make it a habit to constantly go back to your fundamentals. It's always super essential and it really helps you problem solve a lot faster. Okay, so going into your style chart. So because you've done so much fantastic work already, I think making this mood board is really helpful and also really smart. So I wanna congratulate you once again for taking that initiative to make this mood board. I think it's a really good way to help you dissect exactly 
exactly the direction that you want to go to. For everybody out there, that's my tip number one. I would say do what Yoda Sarah has done here and make a mood board of the direction that you want to go in. All right, so let me go through the mood board and describe what I'm seeing here. First of all, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, ten artists and you've gone through and listed what you like and appreciate about that person's artwork. So I think that's a really good start. Well done. And then you've also listed things that you like drawing, which is also fantastic. Really nailing down your subject matter and things that really speak to you is already half the battle as well. So well done. That's primo. You've also listed your favorite brushes and textures. You've also got a color palette down below. Now, overall, my very first impressions of this is that it is quite a lot and it's great to have a lot of inspiration to draw from and I'm going to repeat this word quite a lot. I do believe you need to edit and basically nail down some more specifics because right now I can see from your email you're very overwhelmed and unsure of the direction you should go into. And I think that's because this mood board of your thought process is that you're trying to take a lot of elements and put a lot of things together which doesn't pertain to a specific niche. I also think just in your process it's becoming a little overwhelming to read this. And by the way, editing is a great stage to be at. Editing is honestly an awesome stage to be at. I think you've already done so much hard work of collating all of these things. Just, you know, cutting things down is like the nice fun part. It's a, a stage where you can start to say goodbye to things that aren't necessarily serving you and your niche. And you can focus in on what really is that you're trying to capture and say with your artwork. So my recommendation is you've got a lot of artists, a lot of artists who I would say live in a similar bubble, but I don't think they're specific enough. I think you need to cull down the artist list that you get inspired by. I think you need to cut them down to, I mentioned, I think four artists, but I think something a bit more specific like four is a good start. I also want you to start thinking about putting these artists in a house and putting them in an umbrella so it should look like these artists really belong to a collective of some sort. If you're unsure of what that looks like, then I recommend researching art movements. So like the Impressionists, or the Memphis Style Collective. Reading up on what a group looks like will really help you figure out where your place in the art world is. Then you can really figure out what avenue you should go into. Think of an art collective that you would like to see yourself in. It's a nice aspirational goal as well. When you're also collecting these artists, I want you to go through an exercise of how that artist's artwork makes you feel rather Rather than the list that you've given here which is going through elements that you like and writing a couple of lines of like why this person's artwork is important to you will really help to start that process of memorizing what you want to put out into the world. To summarize, cull down the artists, collect artists that you believe work cohesively together and write down what those artists mean to you, what their artwork means to you. Okay so moving on to another part in your mood board which is brushes and textures. I think the textures and brushes that you use really are going to reflect on the mood that you're trying to go with in your artwork. You know, a soft brush is obviously delicate and whimsical or hard brushes and sharp lines are, you know, more aggressive. So that stage is going to kind of come naturally once you work out the mood and what you're trying to say with your artwork. An art style is more focused on what your artist voice is and what you're trying to communicate rather than specificities in line art and stylization. I think right now again I'm going to mention editing. You've got two very contrasting brush textures here. One's really hard and one's really soft. Again I think you just need to do some reflective exercises and see exactly what that will look like for you and what you're trying to say. If you look at the artists that you admire maybe analyzing their line work as well and if that's cohesive with their the mood and what they're trying to communicate if that's cohesive and 
if those two things correlate. So I think you have to just basically choose one or the other. That's my summary here. Lastly, with brushes and textures, I did some scoping and I also went through and went to your Instagram. I will have it up on screen. I'm going to be a bit more subjective in this area. So this is more what I personally like about your artwork rather than like an objective rule. Personally think that your soft lines here, textured gradients are really working for you specifically in this car piece. And I'd like to see you explore that a little bit further. There's something there that I quite enjoy. So take that what you will, just on a personal note, I quite like that, especially because you are using really harsh colors. It could be a good contrast there, but that's just my personal opinion. So color palette, I also did some more digging and I went to your website. This was the very first page on your website that included artworks that you were quite proud of. And for me, I feel like these artworks, I can just see a lot of passion in these artworks. I can see your style already developing. I think you already have a style. It's just a matter of like editing and niching, you know? In your mood board, you have a lot of colors. You basically have the whole rainbow. So I'm not quite seeing a very specific color palette. Again, here I would like you to edit this this down to three main colors. Color is the very first thing that people see when they witness an artwork. So making that really recognizable to hone in on your niche and your branding would be really helpful. I think focus on just really limiting the color palette. I will have some artists up on screen who do this really well where they limit their color palette. Limiting the color palette and having lots of repetition of the colors throughout lots of different pieces is going to help to make you a lot more recognizable do not underestimate the power of repetition. Repetition and making the same artwork framed in lots of different varieties is really helpful. It just really helps people identify you really quickly. Key example, I'm doing a tarot card deck. So there's just constant repetition of the same framing, the same center character composition. That repetition is really, really helpful to helping people understand and find you and limit your niche down. We each artwork don't feel like you have to constantly reinvent the wheel and that repetition of subject matter, color palette, textures, don't underestimate it. It's very, very, very powerful. Just to summarize the mood board section, I hope by editing down your mood board, it helps you clarify exactly what your niche is because that's obviously the main concern that you have mentioned in your email. I think you've done a lot of fantastic work already culminating all of these things. You're almost there. You're so so close, keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the other sections of the email, but you guys, if at any point this was helpful, comment below if any of the tips that I just talked about were helpful for you, pop them in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video as well. Ah. Okay, Yoda Sarah, I really hope that helps. I am very excited to see the next stage in your artwork. I'm excited to see what projects you're going to work on. Uh, let's move on to the next submission. Okay, so the next person for the June submissions asking for advice is from Serena, but the Instagram handle is Rena, so I'll just refer to them as Rena. So they've submitted this artwork and their art goal is to reconcile digital and traditional art together, since that's been something they've been plugging away at. Let me just look at both of the artworks, the digital and the traditional artworks, see if we can flatten out any seams here. Okay, so your digital artwork is this girl with brown hair on a green background with a pom-pom jumper and red pants. And then the traditional one that you have is girl with purple hair and a light blue top on a dark background. Both looking very similar, a very similar face, similar body shape, similar body position. So for me, I'm seeing the only difference really is the color palette. So if you are wanting to reconcile those two things to hone in on your style and your niche, maybe just picking a particular color palette and repeating that, like I mentioned previously, that really helps for your branding, but also just helps to make your voice and your art a little bit more specific. So people always can be like, mm, who is the artist that uses purple? Oh, I know. From your email, I got the impression that you're really open about learning and really positive about the journey that you've been on. And you're really proud of the artwork that you've made and submitted here. So I also want to congratulate you just going from your Instagram. I think you've been experimenting a lot and it's always really good to hold on to that open experimentation. I want to make sure that you stick 
and hold on to that, the open-mindedness of it all. Your intention for the uh, traditional piece was to give the artwork a celestial, moody vibe. I think you've done that really well with this artwork. You just sent a couple of pictures showing um, the artwork in lots of different lights and you wanted to show off the sparkly paint quite a bit on the dark background, so I think that was done really well. I just would like you to kind of start from your foundation a little bit more and think about what you're trying to communicate first and foremost. By that I mean if what your intention was to uh, create a more celestial vibey artwork I'd like to see you push that a little bit more maybe put in some moons. Don't be afraid to be literal. I think we all overthink it and don't want to do it because we want to be original but if you're trying to communicate a celestial vibey thing then stick with stars and moons. In your email you mentioned that you were really proud of this OC original character and this character has been a bit of a breakthrough for you so I'm really happy and excited for you to continue experimenting and making lots of artworks with this character. What I would like to see more of in your artwork is a little bit more variety in the facial expressions and more variety in the body language. I'd like for you going further to be open to experimenting with you know developing the actual character a little bit more. What I'm getting from from these two characters that you've submitted is I'm not sure what their personality is like maybe I can kind of tell from the mood of their clothing but I'd like to see more of who they are so I can view your character and understand exactly what their personality is, what their interests are. So going forward I'd like for you to experiment with different facial expressions and also experiment with different body positions. Be open to experimenting with not doing any more symmetry. It's very rare to have a character sitting, you know, perfectly symmetrical. Nobody's face is symmetrical in real life. Yeah, I want you to more think about what you're trying to communicate and who the characters are. I've linked below a bunch of resources, extra resources for you to research on how to develop pushing forward a character's personality and expressions going further so um, I really want to encourage you to research and learn a little bit further on how you can develop personalities more in your character. I'll have all the resources in a blog post on my Patreon for everybody if you want to learn further on how to develop a character's personality. All right, so that is it for me. To all of my submitters, I have sent an additional email out to you as well. Just going into a couple of things in case I've missed them in this video. I wanna thank you so much for your submission. I know it's a little scary to submit your art and have the world look at it, so well done. And I will put the links to both the artists that I've mentioned in the video. I'll have them linked in the description as well. Okay, you guys, we are done for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value out of this video, make sure you give it a like and also become a subscriber to get lots of inspiration about the art process to help you on your fellow art journey. And remember, if you'd like to be part of this video series where you get to chat with me one-on-one -on -one through your art process and get lots of tips and tricks about what direction you should go in, consider becoming a patron. Submissions are now currently open for the July round and that ends on this date here. So now's a great time to join because submissions are open for the July round. If you want to follow me in between videos, you can head over to my Instagram at Zeke's Lunchbox. I also have a Facebook group. If you want to continue chatting, consider joining the art group as well. Another thing, I will be opening up my store to international shipping once more. I had to close down international shipping just for a hot minute to catch up with parcels, but I'm opening it up again and there will be a massive print launch at the end of next week. So yeah. Stay tuned, keep following along, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.